This is the first lecture of a very short unit, only two lectures, on an important topic in algebra, that of an inverse function. It is essential to have a good understanding of a function, a concept we studied in the third unit, to master the concept of an inverse function. In some simple words, an inverse function, if it exists, undoes what a function do. If we go back to an image from Unit 3, Section 2.2, and we think of a function f as a machine that transforms an x into an f of x, then an inverse function would traverse the machine in the reverse way. It goes from f of x to x. Be careful though, it is not always possible to go back in the machine in that direction. We will see when we can do that in the second lecture. In the first lecture, you will learn how to decide if two given functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses of each other, and you will also learn the three fundamental relations between two inverse functions. You will need the following skills to master the content of this lecture. You must be able to manipulate algebraic expressions. You must understand the terminology and notation of functions. You must be able to take the composition of two functions. Let's begin with the first example. In this first example, I'm giving you the expressions of two functions, r of x and p of x, and I'm also giving you some inputs for each. I'm asking you to find the output. To speed up the computation, I will use my calculator. I'm going to enter r of x in y1 and p of x in y2. Let's do it. So I open the y equals menu and I enter r of x in y1. So this is 3 divided by x minus 2, minus 2. And in y2, I want to enter 3 divided by, be careful, I have to divide by x plus 2, so I must open a parenthesis, x plus 2. Here we go. I have y1, I have y2. Then I'm going back to the home screen right here, and I'll get the first value, which is r of 3. So y1 of 3. So remember y1, alpha trace y1 of 3. And the answer is negative 1. Okay, let me record that right here, negative 1. All right, I'm going to continue and fill out all of these other entries. Uh, please make sure you can do it on your own and check my answers. Be careful now. I need to find p of 0. p is in y2. So now I need to take y2. So alpha trace, y2 is number 2 right here. y2 of 0. And the answer is 1.5. All right, let's record that. 1.5. Let's continue. All right, this is finished. And right away, I notice something interesting when I fill out the first row and the second row. Let's take a closer look. When 3 is the input of r, negative 1 is its corresponding output. When negative 1 is the input of p, 3 is a corresponding output. So the input became the output, and the output became the input. And this pattern is true for all input and output of the first row and the second row. When 0 is the input of p, 1.5 is its corresponding output. When 1.5 or 3 half is the input of r, 0 is its corresponding output. Again, we had an exchange between input and output, and this again is true for all entries of the first and second row. Something interesting is happening there. Let's explore further. 
In the second question of the first example, I am given the composition of RNP or PNR and some input. I must figure out their output. So let's begin. R composed with P at zero. Remember that means R of P at zero. P of zero is 1.5. So this is R of 1.5. R of 1.5 is 0, so this is 0. OK, let's go over the second one. R of P at 1, so R composed with P at 1 is R of P of 1. So what is P of 1? Well, P of 1 is 3 over 1 plus 2, so it's 3 over 3, so it's 1, so it's R of 1. And what is R of 1. R of 1 is 3 over 1 minus 2. So it is 3 minus 2. So it is 1. OK. Now, P of R of 1. Well, again, it's going to be P of R of 1. So this is R of 1. Well, we already computed before, is 1. And P of 1, again, we computed that before right here, is also 1. Okay, so finally, P of R at negative 2. So this is P of R of negative 2. What is R of negative 2? Well, let's check in the calculator. R of negative 2, so R is in Y1, right? So Y1 at negative 2, and that is negative 3.5. Okay, so this is P of negative 3.5. OK, so now let's do P of negative 3.5. So P is in Y2. So Y2, Y2 at negative 3.5. What is that? This is negative 2. So this is negative 2. Again, I notice something very interesting. The input of R of P is the same as its output. See, when the input is 0, the output is 0. When the input is 1, the output is 1. Same with P of R. 1 gives 1, and negative 2 gives negative 2. This is again something interesting, and there seem to be something going on between the function R and P. Let's go over the third question of this first example. In the third question now, I'm asking you to find the expression of R of P of X and P of R of X, okay? So R composed with P of X is R of P of X. How do I find this expression? I need to rewrite R and every time I have an X, I will put the expression for P of X. So it is R is 3 over X minus 2, so 3 over, but instead of X, I need to enter p of x. So p of x is 3 over x plus 2, and then minus 2, OK? So 3 over x minus 2, but instead of x, I've entered the expression for p of x. OK, I need to simplify this. So how do I do that? Well, this is a ratio of 2 fraction, 3 over 1 over 3 over x plus 2 minus 2. So I know what to do. I take the top fraction and I multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom, x plus 2 over 3. Here, I will simplify before I multiply. And I have, oh, I forgot the minus 2 right here, so minus 2. So what do I have? I have 3 by 3 is 1, 3 by 3 is 1, right? So I have x plus 2 minus 2. Oh, I don't know why everything erased here. There was a 2 right here, there was a 1 right here, and there was a 3 right here, and the 3 was crossed. Uh, I don't know why sometimes things get erased in one note. And the equality here. OK, and you can see x plus 2 minus 2 is just x. OK, so r of p, let's rewrite that here, r of p of x is just x. OK, so now let's compute p of r of x. All right, so P of R of X is P of R of X. Again, I'm going to write P, but every time I have an X, I'm going to write the expression for R of X. So P is 3 divided by 
x plus 2, but instead of x, I need to write 3 over x minus 2, which is r of x, and then plus 2. Okay, so 3 over x plus 2, but instead of x, I've entered the expression for r of x. We've done that several times. I hope you're fine with it. So at the denominator, I notice that minus 2 plus 2 is 0, and so I have 3 over 3 over x. So again, I have the ratio of two fraction, 3 over 1 over 3 over x, which is 3 over 1 times x over 3, which is again, 3 by 3 is 1, which is x. So here again, we found that p of r of x is just x. That is very interesting. Let's go over the last question of the first example. The last question recapitulates what we've noticed in the first three questions. If r of w is equal to t, what can you say about p of t? Well, the output becomes the input of p, and the input of r should become the output, okay? When I go from r to p, my input becomes output and my output becomes input. And what's going on here between R and P leads to the first very important definition. Let's go over it. So this is a definition of inverse function. So if you are given two function, f of x and g of x, when do you say that they are inverse of each other? Well, if g of f of x is equal to x for all x in the domain of f, right? You start with x in the domain of f right here, right? And f of g of x is equal to x. You don't need to pay close attention to uh, the domain right here. What's really important is that right here. If this happens, given two functions, then you will say that f is the inverse of g. Here is a very important notation. If f is the inverse of g, then you write g as f inverse f negative 1 of x, okay? So this is f, the way you read that is f inverse of x. This is called the inverse function of f. Be very careful with the negative 1 notation here. This is just a notation. This is not an exponent, okay? Um, it's a bit unfortunate that we're using this notation like that, but it is not an exponent. It's the notation for the inverse, okay? This remark about this notation leads to a second remark. Be very careful not to confuse the inverse function of f apply to an input with f of x inverse right here, okay? This is a notation. This, on the other hand, is actually an exponent, but this basically means 1 over f of x, okay? It's a reciprocal of f of x. This is a reciprocal notation, 1 over f of x. This is something we will see in the next unit, negative exponent, that is an exponent, okay? You're taking the reciprocal of the output of f at x right here. It means one over f of x. Please make sure you remember that. Let's go over some examples now. So this is example nine from your notes. In this example, I'm asking you to check if f and g are inverse of each other. So this is very simple. I need to check if I have f of g of x equal to x, and I have also to check the other one, if I have g of f of x equal to x. All right, let's check it out. What is f of g of x? Well, what do you do? You copy f of x, and every time you have an x, you replace it by g of x, right? So it is 4 minus 3 half x, so times, and here I'm gonna write g of x, one half of x plus three half. Okay, let's do that. So it is four minus, what do you do right here? You distribute, right? So it is three half times one half of x, and then minus three half times three half. All right, so what is it? Four minus three fourth of x minus 
9 fourth. Well, I could combine 4 and 9 fourth, but uh, this is not equal to x. So f and g are not inverse of each other. Okay? Um, of each other. All right, let's go to the second example. Two functions again. Let's check if they're inverse of each other. So I'll do f of g of x. So what is this? This is f is negative 16 plus x. So I'm going to plug this in there. 4x plus 16 divided by 4. Okay, so what is that? This is negative 16 plus, I don't need the parentheses here, 4x plus 16 divided by 4. I see that negative 16 and 16 will cancel each other, and I have 4x over 4, and that is equal to x. Okay, well, that's a good start. Let's check g of f of x now. g of f of x is equal to, so this time, I got to plug f inside g right here. So it is 4 times negative 16 plus x over 4 plus 16. Okay, how do I do that? Well, 4 is just 4 over 1 times negative 16 plus x over 4 plus 16. I see right away that my 4 will cancel. 4 by 4 1. So what I have left is just negative 16 plus x. So negative 16 plus x plus 16. The 16 will cancel and I have x. So in this case, f and g are inverse of each other, inverse of each other. And I can write that f inverse is g of x. So it is 4 x plus 16, okay? That's the expression of the inverse function of x. Let's continue. Okay, so that's a third example. By this time, I know what to do. I need to check if f of g of x is equal to x. So what is f of g of x? I'm going to plug g of x inside f. So it is 3 times x plus 5 over 3 minus 5. Again, 3 is 3 over 1. The 3 will cancel, 3 by 3, 1, and I'm left with x plus 5. x plus 5 minus 5, it is x. Okay, that's good. Let's check out the second relation, g of f of x. So here, this time, I'm plugging f inside g. So I have x plus 5, so 3x minus 5, that's f plus 5 over 3. I see that the minus 5 plus 5 will cancel, and I have 3x over 3, and that is x. So here again, f and g are inverse of each other, inverse of each other right here, and I have the expression for the inverse of f is g. So it is x plus 5 over 3. All right, let's go over the last example. Example number 12. Okay, let's go. Let's check if these two functions are inverse of each other. f of g of x. So what is it? f is negative 2 over x, so over g of x, right? So careful right here, it's a bit confusing. Negative 2 over x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so be careful again. What do we have? We have negative, so 2 is 2 over 1 over negative 2 over x plus 1. So the first thing I could do is check out that this 2 negative will make a positive, and then I have to divide the fraction. Uh, don't forget the minus 1 right here, right? Minus 1. Okay, so let's see. I have 2 over 1 times, and I got to take the reciprocal of that, x plus 1 over 2, right? So, right here, the 2 will cancel. Oh, again, don't forget the negative 1. And again, I'm not sure why things get cancelled like that. So I have what's left over is just x plus 1. x plus 1 minus 1. And x plus 1 minus 1 is equal to x. Okay, this is good. But now let's check the second relation. I need to check that g 
of f of x is also equal to x before I can conclude, okay? So how do I find the expression of g of f of x? I just need to plug f of x inside g. So I have negative 2 over f of x is negative 2 over x minus 1 plus 1. At the denominator, I see that minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, and I have negative 2 over negative 2 over x. So the 2 negative sign will make a plus, first of all, and then these 2 means 2 over 1, right? So it's 2 over 1 times x over 2, and yes, I do have x. So first, I can conclude that f and g are inverse of each other, right? because f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. And second, the inverse of f of x is g of x, so it is negative 2 over x plus 1. Let's go over now the three fundamental relation between the function and its inverse. Here they are. It is important that you understand and remember these three relations. Here's a diagram that may help you with it. Suppose f associates a to b. Okay? If f associates a to b, I can say that b is equal to f of a. a is the input and b is the output. If f has an inverse function, then the inverse function will associate b to a. That's what the inverse will do, okay? And so you can say that a is f inverse of b. And that explains the first formula. If f carries a to b, then f inverse carries b back to a. Okay, now look what happened if you uh, keep on going. So suppose you go from A to B with F, right? So um, let's take A, let's put it inside F. Now you're right here. What happened if you apply F minus 1 to that? F minus 1 of A, well, F of A is B, right? So F minus 1 of B, and that, by definition of the inverse, is just A. So that explains the third relation, f inverse of f of x is always equal to x, and same with the second. You just start at b right here, and then you go on the loop, and you end back at b. Again, guys, these three relations are very, very important. Let's go over one last type of example. So in this first example, you are told that f has an inverse, f inverse, and you're also given that f of 2 is negative 5. So we could represent that in a diagram. Here's 2, here's negative 5. f brings 2 to negative 5, right? Here's a question. What is f inverse of negative 5? Now remember, f inverse will go from negative 5 to 2, right? So f inverse of negative 5 is just 2. Now the second question is, what is f inverse of negative 5 to the power of negative 1? So this is an exponent. This is a power. This is just a notation, right? So this power means the reciprocal. It means 1 over. 1 over what? 1 over this. So 1 over f inverse of negative 5. f inverse of negative 5 is right here, so it's just 1 over 2. Okay, finally, what is f of 2 to the negative 1? This is a power, right? Let's check it out. So let's evaluate that. So f of 2 to the negative 1 means the reciprocal of f of 2, okay? And f of 2 is negative 5, so it means 1 over negative 5, or just negative 1 over 5. So again, in this example, we drive the difference between the inverse function, okay? This notation goes right next to the function, and it is not an exponent. That is just the inverse function with the reciprocal notation, that's a power, and that means 1 over f of x. Okay, let's go over the last example. 
So this is the same type of question. You're told that H has an inverse, H inverse, and you're also told that H of 2 3rd is negative 3 4 Let's represent that in a diagram. So 2 3rd and negative 3 4 right here, 2 3rd, negative 3 4 and H carries 2 3rd to negative 3 4 And we know that if H has an inverse, then H inverse will carry negative 3 4 back to 2 3rds. Okay? So the first question is, what is H inverse of negative 3 4 So I'm looking at this right here. H inverse of negative 3 4 Negative 3 4 is the input. 2 3rd is the output. It is 2 3rd. What is H of 2 3rd to the negative 1? Well, that's not the inverse function. That's a reciprocal 1 over h of 2 third. h of 2 third is negative 3 fourth. So it is 1 over negative 3 fourth. Well, what's the reciprocal of negative 3 fourth? Negative 4 third. Finally, what is h inverse of negative 3 fourth to the negative 1? That's a question I'm going to leave for you. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.